So this clinic is going to include quite a few things. It's going to town planning. Everything you, you build requires a plan. So the town is not an exception in that respect. And we're going to get into that modification of DPM structures. It's my policy, uh, given these uh, presentations, to cut down on the scratch building and use all buildings that you can easily buy and modify. We're going to get the force perspective. Perspective, in simplest terms, the things that are close to you seem larger than they are a mile away. In model work, we have to force that to make it look more appropriate. Fool the eye techniques. I'll get into that when we get to the point. Roads and grade crossings. Every time you have a town, you're going to be crossing a track somewhere. We've got to address that. Signs, lighting, trees, foliage, and a few more things. Okay. This is where Mystic is going to go. The, um, let me get my pointer out here. The end of, of Mystic Yard is right here, and I've included a passing siding because I'm going to do some switching here. I have a stub end siding here, and I've got a, a switch back here. This is the narrow gauge going up to the mines, and um, we'll have to. We'll talk about more of that later. Okay. This is it in, in, in a drawing. So I've got about 30 inches to the backdrop. The red line is the mystic line. It doesn't cross here. It goes down behind here. That's the only mistake in the thing. So I have about 8 inches to re recreate or create forced perspective. Okay. Every town or everything you do should have a focal point. And I chose this Fallberg station. It was, it's a kit. When it came out, it had a big, long overhang on each end and big beams across to support that overhang. And it looked more European or Switzerland or something like that. So I shortened the roof and just put roof, roof supports in to make it look more American. But I like the look of all the, the roofs. And you can see all the circuits I have going into that uh, building. Okay. Here's the first two structures, uh, the, both the DPM structures. There's, uh, right now I'm just putting them behind the building and finding what's going to happen. I have nothing cast in concrete at this point. It's uh, just put there for to see how it, it fits. There's another DPM structure and a Magnuson structure, and those are glued at an oblique angle for to match the road that goes behind the station, or will go behind the station. All roads in Deep River are dirt roads, and all sidewalks are wooden planks. It's a little bit behind the times. Roads and grade crossings. All right. Next. This cardboard strip, I just tacked up to see what it would look like to have the narrow gauge <coughs> go through a grade crossing on my uh, layout. Since the equipment is, is smaller but than the standard gauge, it lends itself to my force perspective. And we'll see how successful that was as we get on. Okay. So I. I plastered the end of it and brought it across the tracks down in the foreground. 
started putting screening in, so I'll see that little spot there, hopefully, with the train going by. Next. This is kind of a creative uh, grade crossing. I get strip wood that's just a little bit thinner in height than the rail height, so it doesn't hang up the trains. I color them with, with uh, floco grime or gray or light gray or something like that, and uh, I cut them to fit around. This is a, a dual gauge turnout going through this crossing, but that's where the road had to go. And then we put a board on either side to meet the dirt, dirt road as it comes up. Next. Here's the plaster going in as my first house in forced perspective. I think it's probably easier to start in the back and, and, and pick a, a size and then come forward and, and increase the size a little bit by a little bit as you get toward the front. We'll see how small. Next, next slide. Forced perspective, all right. This is a 101 lesson in forced perspective. The gray part is two sides of natural structure, and those three mock-ups in the back are slightly smaller than the one in front of it. My question to you, what is the distance between the, the front of the here and back there? Who wants to make a guess? Oh, everybody, no. Not quite. <laughs> Eight inches of, or eight and a half is about right. But you can see uh, it makes that fire building look like back as farther because of the, of the buildings in front that are larger. Next. Things to remember. I had a, a guy come in and look at the layout and he was looking at the mystic part and, and he looked at the buildings way in the back and said, what scale are those, end scale? And I said, there's no scale. Think in proportion. It, don't get tied down to scale, otherwise you get all confused. Background structures have little detail. Just the barest of uh, essentials because you don't want any detail to destroy the, the force perspective. And the backdrop buildings must not lean. If they lean even an eighth of an inch, it's going to look like it's going to fall over. If you're lighting structures, power your bulbs at a very low voltage so you have a dim light. You don't want it to look like Kmart or something like that. You want it to look like it's a home. Paint the inside of the structure black if you're going to light the, the structure because it's going to look like a Christmas tree bulb if you don't. Avoid dark colors for roofs and sidings because things in the distance don't carry the color as they do as they close up. And the surrounding foliage is in size and color and proportion as well. Next. This is that house that we saw a couple of slides ago. It's made out of styrene. Notice that the, the windows just have a, a cross piece in the window. That's about the only thing you can see from a distance. If uh, it could be eight over eight for all you know, but the only thing you can really see is the that major division in the window. The roof started out black, but I followed my own suggestion and then I started to lighten it with chalk and streaking it. I had to put a foundation because it's going to sit on the side of a hill, so I just painted it on. So you can see how big it is, not very big, and that's what I started with. Next. So I painted inside the building so that uh, it wouldn't uh, show the light through. Next. And since this is going to be a farm, I, I made a gambro roof for a barn. And I remember my lesson, I made this for more gray. I streaked this to make it look like boards going up and down. The silo was a 1 8 inch towel with ink lines on to show the bands and probably put a little more effort in I. I need to in that. Next picture. This is the other side of the barn. I don't, didn't paint it black because it's not going to be lit. 
and I don't model what you can't see, so that's, if, you can, if it looks good from the other side, that's all I need to know. Next. And this is a good representation of making sure they don't lean. This level was put up against the silo, which is the straightest thing you could have, and it looks like it's going to be perpendicular. Next. Here's a couple more structures that are going to be coming toward the front. This one here is still back far enough so you only see the, the windows, but I did add a shed on it to give it a little more variety. This one has two over one, and it's got window sills, fancier roof, and it's got corner poles. So this one's, that building could be just beyond the foreground buildings. Next. Here's that one with the shed. I had to extend the shed because uh, when I started putting scenery around it, there was always a gap under that shed. So I, I, I extended the shed so that the, all the foliage I did covered that, that the area. It's on a pedestal, it moves around because it's gonna be placed on the side of a cliff, actually. Next one. Here it is now. And uh, the only way I could keep it in, in, in place and, and visualize it is to put it on that pedestal. That'll be hidden by scenery after a while. Here's the other one. It's hanging on a shelf behind one of the uh, DPM structures. You won't see the shelf, but uh, show the next slide, please. So this is the building he's hanging on now. This looks like it's, it's standing on its own, particularly when the store next to it gets next to it, and they all go back and, and create a, a relationship between each other. Next, please. I decided to make a styrene house myself and, and put it in the foreground. And uh, I made it two over two the windows. I even made a porch with it. I made my old railings because I thought Grand Line went railings were much too large. And I was curious after I did it, I matched the Grand Line windows and they were exactly the same size as mine. I could have saved myself from work. But anyway, this, this structure is going to be just beyond the, the very foreground buildings. It's only a two-sided structure, so I had to, uh, next one, I put a piece of cardboard across, diagonally across, and I put a piece of cardboard up here to keep the light from shining through the attic window because I figured when the light, is, when the structure is lit, they wouldn't necessarily be in the attic. Next one. So that's a finished structure. It won't win any contest, but uh, it's good enough for a background structure. I put a fancier chimney on, on the roof than I uh, would have. Next one, please. Here's a, I have the uh, finished kit of, of a structure and uh, it, it looked nice and so I figured I'd just make this one out of cardboard. I made sure that all the window openings fit Grant line windows because I didn't want her to go through all that aggravation. Next one. Here it is, uh, with one window in place. I scribed to make it look like uh, lap siding. I made a, a two course foundation around it, put uh, shingles on both uh, sections. Next one. I painted it green because I didn't want it to stand out. And uh, the trouble is when I got it in place, it not only didn't stand out, it didn't even uh, look like it existed. So uh, I decided early on to change the color. And you can see all the circuits I have going into this thing. Next one. I got the grant line windows, I glazed them, and then I, I put curtains on the inside the windows, and when I put the windows in, I had an instant uh, interior detail. This one. Here I'm putting little roof supports up here.
still green. Next one. Now it's yellow. Now it's sitting on a piece of uh, particle board with uh, several courses of stone round supporting it. The tr train will go right in front of here. I put a, a picket fence to keep people from falling off the, the wall and put a little foliage around. And I put some ironwork on top of the two roofs, which is typical of the, the style, and put a fancier chimney. Next one, please. This is my, this is the kit. And the windows are much smaller in mine and, than in the kit. And I have no windows in the, in the turret, nor do I have a front porch. So it's about 10% smaller than the, the uh, kit, which is what I was looking for, because this fits right in with my uh, setting. Next one, please. Now, what's wrong with this picture? With the exception that scenery isn't done here. Who can point out what went wrong? No foundation of the lighthouse. Foundation. <clears throat> well, that, that, that's another thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, and it's crowding it. So that was my thought too, and, I, and that's why you gotta be prepared to take it out, don't save it. I mean, don't throw it away, but you can put it somewhere else. But uh, if you make a mistake like this, correct it. Next one, please. So I made a smaller structure. This is out of cap siding, simpler uh, structure all the way around. Next one, please. And now this one has been able to put foliage in between, and boy, foliage is our friend. It, it makes separation between buildings and hides things and everything else. Next one, please. This is a bulb. And um, what I want to stress about this bulb is it's a 28-volt bulb and uh, gives me a lot of flexibility in lighting it. Uh, I would like this probably at 8 volts, or maybe 10, or maybe 12, but not 28. And when it's, when it's just dim like this, it gives you the dim light you're looking for. Next one, please. This structure is going to sit on top of it. Now, the only thing you have to worry about is you don't see the light through the windows. Next one. This is the night view. And notice how subdued the light is. It's not it's not bright, it's not standing out, it's not drawing attention to itself. And that's, that's the kind of light you want for background structures and even some foreground structures as well. Next one, please.